What is a product that if people found out how it was made they'd stop buying it? Most low to mid tier vodkas. I work at an industrial distillery where we make millions of gallons of very high purity ethanol from corn. We have customers in the beverage market that literally just dilute our product to 80 proof or so, run it through a filter, and bottle it to sell. Those customers sell their products from anywhere from $8 to $50 plus for a liter. And you know what the main difference is? The more expensive vodka's bottle is fancier. It's almost all brand perception with these corn based vodkas. Certain signed artwork. Used to work at an art printing company that we did signature editions of certain pieces. Guess who did the signing me and some co-workers. We were all design and art majors so they just had us learn all the artists signatures. We even had machines that could mimic the signatures too. I wish I had a picture of the devices they were pretty cool. It was in the fine print that we were doing it and was approved by the artists but I guarantee most people would never buy the prints if they knew the signatures were forged. So always read the fine print when buying items, especially special editions of stuff. Only buying from artists from now on. This reminds me of a documentary series my dad once watched, Garlic. The garlic industry is a heck of a lot darker than most people would think. I don't remember everything, but apparently a lot of Chinese companies that sell to restaurants overseas use prison labor. These inmates have to peel the garlic completely by hand, no tools whatsoever. There were a few inmates missing fingernails. If I recall correctly, one man said that he had a friend who had to resort to using his teeth because he didn't have any nails left. They work unimaginably grueling shifts, in which they have to meet a quota for the day or face consequences. They get paid very little, if anything at all. They all seemed so miserable. The series is titled Rotten. You can find it on Netflix. Rotten is so good. There's one about how the avocado trade fuels cartels in Michoacan, Mexico and other ones about milk, cod, chocolate, wine, weed edibles, and more. My parents decided to build a house in another state. The builder did not know I lived in the neighborhood. The builder took this nice piece of land and spread about 2 feet of broken concrete over where the front yard and house would be. Not knowing much about construction practices, I took a picture and showed it to her construction engineer friend. He said that was messed up and there was no reason for that. Hired a local third party engineer to visit the building site, and he said the builder was destroying the land. Parents had a lawyer send a letter to the builder. Builder's lawyer wrote back, denied any wrongdoing. Parents threatened to sue. Builder offered to refund deposit. Rather than waste time money on a lawsuit, parents took back deposit and walked away. Wasted money on architect fees. Builder completed house. The finished house was raised 3 feet above of where the natural ground was. Whoever bought that house either didn't know or care that 6 inches below was tons of broken concrete debris. Frick that guy and every builder like him. Fresh juices are not so fresh apparently. A friend whose family owns Mango Orchard told me these companies buy the leftover stock that doesn't sell directly and leave the rest to strong artificial flavoring for uniform taste. Silk. Bonus story. Had a friend who worked briefly in bridal and was fitting a woman who was boasting how vegan and eco-friendly her wedding was going to be. No one was allowed to wear leather etc. All while wearing her dress with huge amounts of silk on it. ETA. The 17th of July 2020. A lot of people asking if my friend told the bride. So I asked her. No I didn't. The bride and her friend started making fun of my disability when they thought I wasn't in the room and couldn't hear them. I would have also lost my job if I had lost the sale. Extracting raw silk starts by cultivating the silkworms on mulberry leaves. Once the worms start pupating in their cocoons, these are dissolved in boiling water. Wiki. Whoa. I did not know this. For some reason, this is what's got me most surprised in this thread. I want to say sneakers by brands like Nike, who exploit, underpay and abuse their workers, but sadly most people already know how they are made and still buy them. After I found out the story behind the palm plantations for production of palm oil I made it my personal mission to completely throw it out of my life, and that sht is in almost everything you eat. And in so many cosmetic products and in shampoo and in cleaning detergent. One really wonders why the frick they put that in there to begin with. I've worked in two different meat departments and two separate grocery stores. 
The meat in the case that has had work done, marinated or like put into kebabs, are usually the old meat we didn't sell that is about to go bad. That marinade is hiding how crappy the meat looks. I really don't have a problem with this, as long as you're not selling spoiled meat. This is a good way to reduce food waste. Meat will naturally oxidize, losing that bright red color folks like, but this has a pretty minimal impact on taste. Not really a product but if people knew how much and often people cut corners in construction, I think housing prices would go way I I I down. I don't think I was ever on a job where a problem came up, and people were like, okay, let's start over and do this right, or, especially in bigger construction companies, how much time the employees waste to run the clock. When you buy a used house, you'd be shocked at the corners people cut to make them look sellable. I work at a home improvement retailer. They ask you how to do a project and then disregard what you say if they can do it easier faster or cheaper. I know the signs of budget flips and budget repairs now. RVs. They aren't insulated fully. Nothing is sealed correctly. All the electronics that are fancy and new are outdated and inefficient. The manufacturers use the cheapest materials possible and all RVs are built in 8 hours. A vacation home. On wheels. In 8 hours. Nothing is sealed correctly. I spend every summer until I was 17 camping up north in an RV. And thinking back on all the bugs that got inside despite having doors or windows closed when the AC was running. I don't think I could ever do it again. I really don't think there is one. If it's because the ingredients or preparation are disgusting, I think most people are perfectly happy to keep eating using it because the finished product is fine. If it's a moral reason, I just don't think most people would care enough to stop using or eating whatever the product is. We've known for years that Air Jordans are being made with child labor and sweatshops, and sales haven't dipped one bit due to that. And I don't say this as a cynic. I think we should work to improve conditions for all humanity, but the proportion of consumers who would be bothered enough to stop buying a thing is vanishingly small. That reminds me that Hershey's has some ethically made label on the back of their chocolate bars, even though 99% it probably isn't XD. Nothing. People know what goes into hot dogs and chicken nuggets, they still eat them. They've seen what the sweatshops look like, and they still buy stuff from there. I'd imagine if people walk through the sweatshops that produce most of their clothing, they would consider spending a bit more for products made in a more humane way. One of the reasons I think buying ethically made clothing is difficult is the large price difference at least with the clothes I've seen. Also, many of the shops I've seen with strong ethical values tend to be online, and there are some clothing items that are difficult to buy without trying them on. I want to do better but the industry doesn't make it easy. Mica products. I watched a documentary about mica mines in areas where child labor tends to be exploited and the interviewer asked this girl about her experience and she described how her sister died in the mine and she's still working there. Mica is in almost all beauty products and due to the change of hands it can be hard to determine if natural mica is actually ethically sourced. However, after watching some soap making videos, I've discovered that Mad Micah sells sparkly stuff that neither puts children at risk nor destroys the environment with microplastics. For those who want their cake and want to eat it too. Not a product, but a service. I'm a hairstylist that's worked at Great Clips. They want us to do haircuts in under 16 minutes. If you're closer to 12, you become one of the elite. If you get a bad haircut from GC, yes, sometimes the stylist just isn't skilled. Most times, it's because we're rushed and bitched at for taking longer than 16 minutes. People always point at Apple for exploiting Chinese labor but don't realize that pretty much every company does the same thing and most of them use the exact same factory as Apple. It's called Foxconn not Apple. They make everything. Buy might be a stretch. But P. When abuse happens there, not only is it pretty abominable, but the end user also watches a good bit of it with their own eyes. Even worse, the end user is turned on by it. That's literally the end goal. Not exactly a product, but certain legal services. A lot of times lawyers are just filling in blanks from a template when drafting documents, and many problems can be resolved with a 2 minute online search if you know where to look. 
If the public had the knowledge of and access to the resources available to lawyers, there's an awful lot people could figure out for themselves. Of course, that's not to say it's a good idea to DIY a legal matter if you don't know exactly what you're doing. Just that the prices people pay for certain legal services aren't commensurate with the amount of time and effort they actually take the lawyer to complete. You'd be surprised how many products, including food, involve slavery. I'm torn on leather. I've heard that it's typically made of the leftover skin from beef cattle that farmers sell to places that make leather and I can totally get behind the idea of not wasting any part of the animal. But if that's not the case, and it's literally just from animals killed for their leather, that's definitely not okay. Everybody knows how horrible clothing sweatshops are and the vast majority of people still buy the clothes. Everybody knows how horrible animals are treated on farms and the vast majority of people still buy meat. Everybody knows that golden gems are mined by child laborers and the vast majority of people still buy jewelry. Everybody knows that computers and phones are manufactured by abused workers in China and the vast majority of people still buy them. There are very few people who are going to give up their lifestyles for something that is important to them. As others have said, I unfortunately think it takes more than just the knowledge to make people change long-standing habits. But here are some things people don't usually like to think about. 1. Cows need to get pregnant before they'll produce milk, and milk production only lasts about 10 months after that in dairy cows. So dairy cows are forcibly impregnated about once a year by farmers breeders using special devices, in order to ensure continuous milk production. The cows live around 4-6 years before being sent to slaughter, and have around 2-4 calves. If raised as pets, cows live 18-22 years. 2. Different kinds of chickens are preferred for meat versus egg production. So when raising chickens for eggs, it's not cost effective to raise the male chicks. They're all killed as young as possible to minimize waste. Maceration is common, smashing them instantly, because it's fastest and thus most humane. I eat eggs and sometimes dairy, despite lactose intolerance, not judging anyone. But I do wish we had more stringent regulations around treatment of the animals we depend on. I can't remember what documentary it was but, I'll never forget the undercover footage of them throwing the male chicks into plastic bags to suffocate. It's so sad. Fruit smoothies. People think they're getting their daily dose of fruit, but that crap's mostly ice, yogurts and high sugar juice with only a few pieces of solid fruit. Source: I work at Boost. I don't know what's in a jack-in-the-box taco. It's not really meat and it's not really bean. But it's so tasty and I'll eat them anytime I'm drunk and or high. Menopausal people, if your doctor tries to prescribe you Premarin, ask for an alternative. The hormones in this drug are extracted from pregnant mare urine, it's in the name. Don't have to look too hard. These horses are tied in a straight stall, hooked up to collection devices without adequate room to move or lay down. Once the foals are born, they are rebred as soon as possible to continue the collection cycle. What happens to the foals? Some get sold adopted to loving homes, the rest get shipped off to become IKEA meatballs. They're just a byproduct all in the name of getting rid of your hot flashes. Not a crazy pet or vegan. I just own a 21 year old cast off from this industry who has had a lot of issues to work through as a result of his early life experiences. Vegetables aren't necessarily made so this might not count but if people saw the exploitation of people that went into getting their fruits and vegetables it would be a different story. Many minorities work their asses off for little to no pay, through rain or shine. If they saw the hands and feet of the workers that provide them with the food, they'd be pretty shocked. How hard could it be all you do is pick fruit and vegetables all day yeah right. Also the annoying oh my god you should be vegan it's completely cruelty free people should shut up because the food you're provided with by grocery stores isn't cruelty free either. Monster energy drinks. I have been to their bottling warehouse. I was in college with some guys who became chemists for them while I was working on my doctorate. Some defect in one of the machines caused a bunch of cans to leak. The wood pallets underneath disintegrated like wet paper. Further, the maintenance crew was on a cleaning rotation. They told me that the monster tanks do not get cleaned unless there is so much buildup that it changes the taste. This is because it is so caustic that bacteria and mold don't survive. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe.
I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.